how many of these can I wreck before you stop bringing me them? So the Lemons rallies are checkpoint rallies. You have a little mascot, you have your start point, your finish point, and a lot of things in the middle that you have to find. We have our little mascot, it's a rubber duck that lights up, uh, named Duck Norris. Me and, and my friend Adam, I book a flight, he books a flight into San Francisco two days before. We need to spend less than $1,000 for this car, but it's gotta have a current registration on it. And more and more people are just getting less and less assured with us that we're not some sort of scam artist. We just start looking at it and going, okay, well, what if we just rent a car for the rally? I find a coupon code online for a very small yet national rental car chain. Not one of the big ones because I don't want to be blacklisted from them. <laughs> she goes, what car do you want? I get a choice. She goes, yeah, well, I reserved a Challenger or Camaro or something like that. She goes, no, 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 I have eight cars. And she has this stool next to her and she spins it and there's a cardboard square with eight sets of keys hung from it. So we're looking and there's a Toyota RAV4 and a Kia Sedona and a Hyundai Santa Fe. And, you know, nothing really that strikes our fancy. So we get to the bottom and the last car is a Chrysler 300. And this is 2016 and it, it's a 2016 on the key. I'm like, we kind of talk about it and, and we decide on the 300. And I go, we do have the, the insurance and everything covered on this, right? She goes, yeah. I go, so how many of these can I wreck before you stop bringing me them? She kind of tilts her head and she goes, are you going to purposely wreck one of our cars? No, ma'am, I would never do that. We do a painter's tape two-tone, we tape the back doors shut, and we're kind of getting a little flack for bringing a rental car. And I'm talking to the event organizer and saying, it's a Chrysler product. Yeah, it has 200 miles on it. The transmission could fail at any moment in time. And he goes, oh, okay. So he gives us a good amount of starting points for the rally. And it's based on the general hooptiness of the car and the hooptiness of the drivers for the starting points. So we set out for Monterey on the first day up to Fallon, Nevada, going over Sonora Pass. We're climbing this mountain and the car's getting warm. The transmission temperature's going up. We get to the summit of it, and we decide we're gonna let the car sit for a minute and cool down. This is the end of, end of August, it's Monterey Car Week. So everybody's coming into Monterey to go to all the festivities out at Pebble Beach and everything, and it's starting to snow. So we're leading the pack down the mountain, and I'm driving a little bit spirited, but still taking road conditions into account. And I happen to notice that the trans temperature is now up to 240 degrees and the engine's at about the same. We get down to the end, we pull off and a US Army truck comes out from the turnoff where we were and comes over to us. We had stopped at a very remote Army installation and they see three derelict vehicles stop out front and wonder what's going on. The guy was really cool and, and we talked for a while, explained what we were doing. He just sat there and went, all right, well, you've got 15 minutes, get out of here after that. Sir, yes, sir. <laughs> so we get into Fallon, Nevada, everything's fine. Transmission's a little slippy going down through the desert. Fallon to Vegas was all hard roads through the desert. We did go off into the desert. We found a, uh, a little dirt road that went off towards like this little plateau and uh, wanted to do a little sightseeing. So we're just bombing down this road in this rental car, going through brambles. We get out to this plateau and we park the car up at the top. And we notice that about two miles out, there's some sort of vehicle out there. We've made it this far off the road. We've got to go see what it is. So we find a way down there and it's, you know, a late 30s, early 40s Chevrolet sedan that's flipped upside down. 
So we strategically place the cars and take a bunch of pictures and then we flip it right side up before we carry on with our day. Vegas to Bakersfield was all through Death Valley. And we start up these mountain, dirt mountain roads. Most people in their derelict cars that they brought along, you know, their Ford Festiva or their Hyundai Accent, they're doing 10, 15 miles an hour. We're doing 30, 35 with this Chrysler. And uh, one of the checkpoints was the charcoal kilns, which you have to go up a little goat trail to get to in Death Valley. It's beautiful out there. We're letting our car cool down. All the other guys are letting their cars cool down. And a team had brought a V12 Jag XJS that they had wrapped in gold aluminum foil and had proceeded to cut a hole in the passenger side front door for a home air conditioner and had a generator in the trunk. So their car was nice and cool inside. That's when they overheated the car and blew one of the end tanks off the radiator. Apparently this team had had some quarrels earlier in the day and had come to fisticuffs in the desert when one of them blew up the car. So we stepped in and, and separated them. And uh, One of the guys said he was going to stay with the car and he was going to get it running and limp it back to Bakersfield. And one team stayed with him to make sure he was fine. And we took his co-driver and put him in the back of the Chrysler. We get down into Bakersfield and we're doing our end of the day check-in with the organizer. So we explain what happened and he goes, all right. He goes, well, I'll give you some bonus points for picking him up and, and saving his day. And I'll give you more bonus points for torturing him and making him climb in and out of the window instead of being polite and untaping the door. Going down the mountains again into Monterey, we uh, were driving the car really spirited and one of the roads you come out of a, a like an S down into a, a river basin and there's a little bridge that's maybe 200 feet long. And right after the bridge is a kink to the right. So I'm coming down and as soon as I hit the bridge, the tail end of the car steps out. And as it steps out, I'm just holding it in place thinking that's where I'm hitting the mountain. As soon as it came off the bridge, back into the car planted and took off in the right direction. All right, car saved itself. I'm okay with this. Because at this point, we had overheated the engine and trans. In Death Valley, we knocked a hole in the muffler on the passenger side, so it sounds absolutely terrible. We wound up cutting a hole in a fuel line as well on a, on a goat pass in Death Valley that when we got into Bakersfield, we fixed by taking another piece of hose, putting it over top and three hose clamps and some duct tape and it was good to go. So at this point, driving it into a mountain would have been the least of our concerns and probably would have saved us from a lot of questions when we got and returned the car. End of the day, everyone's leaving. Adam and I go, okay, let's untape the car at this point. So we pull off all the painter's tape into this at least three foot ball and I open the trunk to put the ball of tape in there to find a dumpster to throw it in and one of our competitors had left us a ball of police tape. He had a Pontiac Aztec, did a whole Breaking Bad theme with it and at the very end he wrapped the car in police tape and that was his display for the Concord of Lemons. So I went well if Brian left us this his car's still here. I've got an idea. So we took the blue painter's tape, went over, opened the passenger door of his car, put it in, put the seat belt on it, closed the door and drove away. No more than 10 minutes later, I get a text message from him that said, hey, thanks for the ball of tape. I guess you saw what the present that I left you. <laughs> I went up to San Francisco and I hit three car washes along the way because when I rented the car, the girl said, well, if you're going into the desert and you don't clean the car, we charge you $200 to clean it. And I took the car with you know, 200 some miles on it, returning it with over 3,000 a week later. Get to the airport and I check it in. The attendant's there going, oh, well, is there anything wrong with it? I'm like, well, it got a little loud on, on our trip and I, I don't know what's going on, but uh, 
I mean, it drove straight. It just, as we drove, it got louder and louder and louder. And it stopped accepting gas station filler pumps. He goes, well, how'd you fill it up with gas? We were at this little Bob and Jane country store out in the middle of the desert, and it wouldn't take the pump because it's a capless filler. Go in, buy a funnel. It won't move for the funnel either. One of the girls with us is a rally co-driver and she suggests something that I never would have thought of. She goes in and they have the little feminine shiwis. Sure enough, it slides right into the cap. So we stick the nozzle down in there and for the remainder of the trip, use that to fill the car up with gas. <laughs> I drop the car off, go through security. I get on the plane, I get out of town and I'm watching my credit card for the next five or six days, religiously thinking, today's the day they're gonna bill me for damage to the car. Today's the day they're gonna bill me. It's been two and a half years. I still haven't gotten charged. <laughs> then Wiki is proud to be partnering with mobile app Hero to continue changing the way we look at documenting automotive history. We're working with them to bring updates to our mobile and web-based app, so stay tuned to their social media and ours and keep telling the stories of all the cars you love.